Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and I'm working through the science to try to answer the question, why has no new record minimum Arctic sea ice extent occurred since September 2012? Uh, since, since September 2012, we've set, continued to set, I think seven of, of the last eight or nine years have set new global temperature, uh, global average temperature records, and the Arctic temperature amplification has been increasing um, significantly since then. The ratio of the Arctic temperatures to the global temperatures have even been rising. Um, and yet there's been, yet the ice has been hanging on, okay? We haven't set new records since September 2012. So I'm trying to explain that. And I was talking about, <clears throat> you know, how the, um, so what, how the, the jet stream, um, so we're getting, um, ridge-like conditions, higher sea, higher sea level pressure in the spring and early summer. So the skies have been clear, relatively clear over the Arctic, and we've had tremendous ice melt. And that gets everybody excited saying, well, this will be the blue ocean event year. This will set a new record. But then in August, sometime in, in, in August, there seems to be an abrupt shift in the weather patterns in the Arctic and we get a low sea level pressure over the Arctic all of a sudden and we get a lot of clouds and the wind direction changes so Fram sea ice export halts and we don't set a new record. You know this has happened just about every year since 2012 with the possible exception of, 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 20, of this year 2020 and perhaps even 2019, you know, there's significant ice melt continuing past that. So the question is, why is that happening? Associated with that is a split jet stream. Um, also associated with that is high pressures, so low pressures over the Arctic Ocean, high pressures over East Asia, Scandinavia, and Northern North America, and therefore heat waves in those places. Heat waves um, and... Um, you know, extreme other extreme weather events occurring. Okay, and this is and the split jet stream uh, actually gets looks like there's wave guiding, and we get these we get between six and eight wavelengths Rossby waves circling the planet, and those waves can get stuck, and we can get blocking patterns and extreme weather uh, extreme weather events. Now, the split jets are associated. The mechanism to link these features appears to be um, associated with di the diminishing spring snow cover over, the, over northern hemisphere continents. So we're getting less and less snow cover in the spring over the northern hemisphere continents. So they're heating up quick, quicker than they did before in the spring. Um, and the soils are drying out. So we're getting a lot of heat in those regions. So as you go north from the equator to north, you know, the temperature is dropping and then you hit these continents where the, the snow cover has declined and you get a large temperature anomaly uh, uh, warming there. And then as you go further north, you get the cooling. So that extra peak seems to create a, the waveguide conditions, which tends to lead to what Michael Mann called quasi-resonant amplification. Um, and this seems to act as a negative feedback on um, the loss of Arctic sea ice decline during the latter part of the summer. Okay, so again, the globe's seven warmest years have all occurred since 2012. So why is the sea ice hanging on? There has to be some you know, negative feedback going on, but what mechanisms are in play? Okay, uh, the Arctic warms three times faster than the global average. We're setting record global average temperature since 2012, and yet the sea ice is still hanging on. So clearly, there, the, you know, there has to be some negative feedbacks going on. Um, the, the sea ice has declined in all months since 1970s, late 1970s. Uh, it's lower than it's been in uh, 1,500 years. This is the Canard et al. 2011 paper. 2003, 2005, 2007, 2012, 
the ice has set record lows, right? So it was doing it every couple of years in 2003, two years later, then two years later after that, then five years after that, and then nothing. No new record for eight years. So why? You know, in 2012, there was a large cyclone which shredded the, the weak ice and pulverized it. Okay. Um, so, but, you know, again, lots of people are watching with bated breath. You know, will it be this year? And they see the high melt rates in the spring and the early summer, and they say, yeah, for sure, it's going to set a new record. And then suddenly, uh, you know, you know, sometime in August and early September, low pressure takes over the Arctic and the sea ice uh, loss stalls out. So something has changed. You know, this is this a quirk of natural variability? It doesn't seem like that's the case. Something has changed in the system that applies the brakes on the ice retreat. And we need to understand this clearly to understand when the ice will be completely gone. So the sea level pressure dropping over the Arctic, that was noted by Vavris in 2012, Francis and Vavris, the cool Arctic hot Asia pattern, um, you know, seem to be two faces of the same coin. That's the question. The change in atmospheric circulation was has been noted. Uh, there was the Man paper in 2017 on quasi-resident amplification. Um, uh, Wu and, Fra and uh, Francis in 2019 had a paper about the cool Arctic summers and tying that to Asian heat waves. Um, so the new paper I'm going to discuss in detail now uh, that was just published um, by Francis and Wu looks at it looks at a lot of different parameters to try to find out tease out the mechanisms. So you know it looks at the daily surface air temperatures, the sea level pressures, the winds at 300 hexapascal, which is the jet stream winds, the cloud fraction, the geopotential heights. Um, the, um, the winds, you know, it looks at it on a daily basis, but also on a monthly basis. It looks at the heat waves over Europe and, uh, over the continents, uh, by looking at the surface air temperature and when it's one or one and a half sigma above the average, it's defining the heat wave. And it's also looking at the wind patterns and doing it in a similar, similar fashion. Okay. So it looks into all of these sort of details. And I'm going to start uh, showing you, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look at the paper now. Okay, I'm gonna have a look at these uh, details because I think this is a very key paper to help us try to figure out, you know, what, what will be the year of the, of the first uh, blue ocean event? You know, is it gonna keep surprising us? So this is a paper, it's open access. It's got the title, Why Has No New Record Minimum Arctic Sea Ice Extent Occurred Since September 2012? Okay, but before I get into the details of that, I just want to show you, you know, this is my blog, paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating to support my research and work in putting together all these videos. I probably have seven or eight hundred fifty minute videos now. I think I'm up to. This was the, the, the recent post just from Yesterday, can we keep our Earth habitable? Abrupt climate system change. This, of course, is Shackleton being a bit of a, you know, a bit of a clown eating my plants. Um, you know, he's just such a playful um, cat. So please have a look at these videos. Um, you know, they're asking the question. You know, can we stabilize our climate? And I talk about some of the ideas that I've had, and uh, you know, also uh, lots of details and. You know, if you're interested in chess and the Netflix series on, you know, the Queen's Gambit, I luckily managed to just snag the 1982-83 book called The Queen's Gambit. Um, haven't read it yet, just got it today. Uh, but I talk a little bit about, you know, my passion for board games and chess. And, you know, I'll do a bit of bragging here. I reached about 40th in Canada, master rating of 2321. I play on Lee Chess, L I. C H E S S, and I'll join chess.com. And you know, if you watch my videos and you want a game, you know, just find me on these platforms. I also uh, play, uh, you know, I'm also a master in uh, duplicate bridge, so I play 
I play on um, some bridge servers and, you know, I'll talk about that or you can find me on some Scrabble servers and stuff. So, you know, if you're in, anyway, that that's it's an excellent series um, and the popularity of chess. I think they said something like 100,000 people were signing up per day on chess.com. So it's really kindling. You know, also people are confined at home with the virus. So many, many people are studying and improving their chess game. And please have a look. You know, this is from my Twitter feed. You know, some interesting phenomena, rocks on a lake, the radiation from the rocks blocking some of the sun, ice melting away, and these things being balanced. This is actually happening, these near impossible frozen structures. So anyway, um, so please, uh, you know, check out my blog and consider donating to my PayPal account. This is my YouTube channel, um, the last couple of videos here. And, uh, you know, also you can just you Google YouTube Paul Beckwith and subscribe, you know, and uh, make sure you, you know, comment and so on, you know, suggest videos, et cetera, et cetera. It's always very helpful. Okay, um, this is my Twitter uh, at Paul H. Beckwith. So here's my the question. Can we keep our Earth habitable, you know, from the previous couple of videos in the post? And I'm a big fan of the Big Bang Theory, and there's a great article here um, about all of the different characters in the Big Bang Theory and what they're doing in real life and, uh, you know, their roles in the show and something, you know, interesting uh, stuff if you're a fan of that. Um, you know, so I'm posting all kinds, of, all kinds of stuff here. Here's an article about the heat blob. You know, it's not just in the Atlantic, it's in the Pacific that's driving sea ice loss, um, the Atlantification of the Arctic. So there's all kinds of stuff, um, you know, and I do follow the SpaceX stuff, always been interested in technology and rocketry. And a friend of mine sent these pictures here, you know, these little pebbles on his walk that were being forced up, you know, by ice. Okay, so similar, similar phenomena. And if you're also following SpaceX, they're going to do a big test of the Starship rocket in uh, the next, over the next week. So, you know, follow my Twitter uh, feed. Um, this is uh, one of my Facebook uh, pages here. Facebook, paul.beckwith.9. And, um, you know, one of the things I will talk about more is SF6, okay, so this is sulfur hexafluoride, okay, it's 23,000, the, the global warming potential is 23,000, 23,000 times more powerful than CO2. Um, the claim here from a friend is that the Chinese are sending it up into the air so fast that, that you get the impression they want to kill everybody on the planet. I, I don't, you know, I don't know where, where he's getting that from, but, you know, this is a growth rate. It's very, very steady. This is 2014 to now, you know, and it's very low concentrations, but it's got a huge global warming potential and it stays up in the atmosphere for, for ages. You know, if you want to destroy the planet, you put this stuff up into the atmosphere. I'll talk about that in a separate video. Um, and this is another Facebook page here. I should change the picture, but a friend of mine, Matthew, sent me this article um, just uh, earlier today, and I thought, okay, I've got to do some videos on this. This is this is crucial information um, on on this article here. Okay, and uh, you know, if you look at the Arctic sea ice, Google Arctic sea ice graphs, and you can see, you know, that it was records until about. This is about or the first week of August, you know, 2020 was setting a record. Everybody thought, OK, is it going to set a new record this year? Then it flattened out here. Right. So what happened is the sea level pressure is high. Melt rates very fast in the sea level pressure. The atmosphere suddenly shifts. Sea level pressure is low. Right. Clouds. There's clouds and colder weather in the Arctic. The growth, the, the, the drop rate of the ice slows down. It flattens out here. But then this year that was maintained. People, was, well, the ice isn't reforming. And then, you know, it's, it's going up like this. So, so, you know, we've got to try to figure out exactly what's going on with these patterns. Okay, so, so I'm going to talk about all of the figures and the main details of, the, of this new Francis Wu paper. 
um, in the uh, next video or two and relate it to stuff I've already talked about. Okay, thank you for listening.